I have been lately on a bit of a halt with all of my projects. As you're watching this, the sewing machine that I unboxed in my last vlog has not shown up yet. So what I am doing is trying to fill time with other projects until that shows up and I can continue on that quilt that's back there. So what I've decided to try my hand at is making pillows out of old shirts. These are shirts I got, some of them from the clothing that we had donated to us that our church members had already gone through and then I snagged what I wanted out of it. And a couple of these are shirts that my mom gave me that she had that she's like, I don't wear these anymore, but they're still really nice and I think they'd make cute pillows. So I am going to experiment with making two different kinds of pillows, essentially the same, but also like a little bit different. And the reason I'm doing this now instead of putting it off again and again and again, like I have been the last for forever, is I I made my Facebook page for my memory quilts, is Schuler Memory Quilts. There is a link in the description box below this video if you wanna go check it out and give it a like. That would be wonderful, thank you very much. But I had somebody reach out to me and it was an especially exciting somebody because I have no idea who this person is and we have zero mutual friends. And you might not understand why that's exciting, but it's exciting because it means my memory quilt page is reaching strangers. It's getting out there exactly like I wanted it to. So this girl reached out to me. She asked for information about the quilts and I was telling her and I was like, I'll happily answer any other questions that you have after I gave her like a whole list of information. And she goes, awesome, thanks. And then she asked, do you make pillows as well? And I told her, no, I don't currently. Although I have a pile of my own clothes that I've been meaning to make into pillows and I just haven't gotten the time to sit down and actually figure it out and do it. So that's what's prompting me to do this because if people are already asking about memory pillows, I wanna be able to offer it. So the two types of pillows that I want to make, one I want to make where essentially you take the shirt, you cut it out into whatever size you want it to be, you put the right sides together, you sew three quarters of it, and then you flip it all right side out, you stuff it with stuffing, and then you hand stitch that last little bit closed so that it is a sealed closed pillow that if it gets dirty, you're stuck like you have to throw the whole pillow in the wash. That's the first kind I want to make. But the one I want to really get good at and make a lot of looks strangely easier. And that is when you have an opening that you leave in the back. And those, it's just like, so you, you essentially just make like a slip cover for pillow forms. So you can buy like plain pillow forms uh, like Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, wherever you want to buy them. And you can get them in different sizes. I think 12 by 12 is the smallest I've seen so far. You just take, like, like I have this design from one of the shirts. It's like a city design. There you go, now you can see it, like a city design. So I would measure out how big that is and basically then cut the shirt in a way that when I sew it together, there's an opening in the back that you can stuff a pillow form in so that if this gets a stain on it, you can just take it off the pillow and wash this and treat it like you're washing a t-shirt rather than having to put the whole pillow in the wash and risk ruining it because the inside isn't supposed to be washed or like take it to the dry cleaners or just now it's stained and it's ruined. So. Those are the kinds I want to experiment with. I'm going to play around with it because, again, I don't know how this is going to go. But I want to be able to do both of those types well. I want to have that variety. I, I personally think I would reach more for the covers. That's what I want to experiment with. So I need to look. Dan is on his way home, so I might be running to Walmart after he gets home so I can look and pick up like a pillow form. Or I might just wander my house and see if we have a pillow that's an appropriate size that I can just stuff into these for like checking sizes and play around with it some. Also, 
if these are removable, that means I can't interface them and get rid of the stretchiness. And I very much dislike sewing stretchy material. So this is going to be a lot of experimenting. I'm probably going to start with this shirt because this is one of the shirts that I got from the like garage sale thing. And it's cute. Like it's a cute pattern. But I also have absolutely zero emotional attachment to this. So if I screw it up, I'm not going to care that much. Oh my goodness. That was like scarily loud for an airplane. All right, so what I have done so far, I'm gonna try to flatten this out as best as I can. I've cut the shirt in half, essentially, so the front and the back, and I've cut off the sleeves because not using the sleeves ever, really. Oops. You were sitting on my ruler that I needed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, although 14 inches works right there as well, so I could bring this all the way up to like right there. It needs to be at least 14 and a half inches though for seam allowance, Julie, remember that. I love that being very not straight. So I'm going to make this shirt into a, are you serious? This is gonna be a 12 inch shirt because I was not thinking and I cut it too short. This is why I practice on clothing I don't like. Unless, well, because here's the thing, I could actually still make this a 14 inch one because this, if we keep that at 14 and a half right about there, no, that still won't work because that's not long enough. So no, it has to be. Okay. I just did not think that through when I was deciding. Okay. So we're going to make this a 12 inch pillow. What I need to do is get some cardboard that we aren't using anymore and cut that into squares that is the sizes I want. That's honestly probably exactly what I should do. I'll probably do that after I stumble my way through this. Why don't you do it now, Julie, you ask? Because I want to stumble my way through this first, I answer. And here is my first little square. Look at that. Look at how cute that is. So this is going to be the front of my short. Short? Shirt. Now what I need to do is make a 13 inch chunk of this. So that's straight enough right there. So let me just cut this at 11 here. Because the reason I am wanting to use the side that has the hem on it there and also this front piece that has the hem right here, you can see all of that, yeah, you can, is because this is gonna be the side that you can like flip inside and out. So it's gonna be like laying over itself like that. So you can open it up and take the pillow in and out and whatnot. So that's the reason I want this to, I wanna just keep the hem to side if I can, cause it'll just make everything look significantly nicer. Otherwise I would have to cut it longer than what I need it to be and hem those edges myself or sew them shut myself so that there weren't raw edges sticking out because that would just look really bad. Usually you want the back pieces to be two separate pieces and you want them each to be relatively like two thirds what your original size is. So that would mean if the front, I'm gonna bring this up so you can see me, hello, instead of just talking to my hands. So let's say like this, this pillow, the final size is going to be 12 inches. It's gonna be a 12 inch by 12 inch square pillow. So you cut the front of it to be like 13 inches or 14 inches large, like you want it to be larger than the final 12 inches because you need to account for seam allowance and the stretch being all wonky. 
And on the back, because you're leaving that fold open so you can stuff it and unstuff it, you want to cut two separate pieces, but you wanna cut them large enough that they overlap with each other. So you wanna cut each one of those flaps to be about two thirds the size of the entire pillow. So in this case, you'd want them both to be about eight inches. This one is very clearly not eight inches because this was the part of the shirt that I cut for the front, meaning I need to make this one be probably closer to the full 12 inches in size just to make sure that everything overlaps and it looks nice. So that's what I'm attempting to do now. So this is six inches, which is actually a lot closer than I thought it was. So maybe I'll just make that one 10 inches and that should be fine. I think that's what we're gonna try. So once everything is cut, you should be left with three pieces of fabric that look like this. One, which is the whole front of your pillow. So whatever design, if there was only a design on one side you wanted, that would be what this is. Cut, I cut mine an inch larger than what the final size of the quilt will be. So I have a half an inch of seam allowance around each side. And then these two are the two back pieces. Ideally, they would each be about two thirds the size of this. This one is smaller, so I made that one a little bit larger. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these pieces and we are going to lay them over top of this piece so that the raw edges of each of the fabric are next to each other and this nice hemmed edge is in the middle of this square. And I'll line it up in a second here when I have both hands. And then the same thing with this one, we're gonna lay it over so that again, nice hemmed edge is right here and the raw edges will line up up there. I want the smaller flap to be on the inside, so I'm going to leave that on top so that when I sew it and turn it inside out, that will be on the inside and you'll see mostly just the larger one. So let me pull out my sewing machine and try to do that. there is the finished case. I turned it right side out. So this is what the front looks like. You can see the final size is 12 by 12. You flip it over so you can see what's going on in the back here. And you see how like nice that looks. So you just have that flap and you can open it up and see the smaller one there. And that's how you can then stuff your pillow inside of it. All right, I cut up that other shirt quick just so I could actually make a pillow that was big enough I could put one of the pillows I have in it so you can see what it looks like when it's all done. Look at that, I'm pretty happy with that. So this is the whole front of it. And then on the back, as you can see, I didn't quite, I ended up, I cut both of the pieces the sizes they needed to be, but this one, what I used the seam on and this one it was a raw edge so I had to sew it closed to finish the edge and I forgot that that would actually you know take length off so I should have left it longer than I did and I didn't think about that when I cut it so now I know although it kind of makes it look like a howler from this way which you know if you're a Harry Potter fan you know that reference and I think that's kind of fun but from the front it looks great and we could always, this is a 14 inch pillow. The, it is just a little bit tight because again, I'm getting used to like the stretch, having to deal with stretchy fabric. So there is that. That is what it looks like. You have this part that you can, you know, pull the pillow in and out of. And you just toss that in the wash if you wanted to, or yeah. There we go. Okay, it is the next day. I am working on trying to perfect how I wanna go about making these pillows so they come out as good as they can. So I've cut up another shirt. It is this pineapple shirt. This is going to be the largest pillow I have made. Um, I don't remember if I told you or not, I did take some old boxes and cut them up to make um, like templates. So this is 17 by 17 inches for a finished size of 16 by 16. And then I have sort of like the smaller piece behind it. And then I have a template for a 
14 by 14 and a template for uh, 12 by 12. So I have those three. So it makes it really easy to line everything up and then I just like draw around it and then just cut it out quick. So what I am doing, I have all three pieces cut. I have the front, I have the back piece right here that has the seam on it, and I have the second back piece with no seam, which I cut two inches longer than the other back piece so I can fold it and give it a, 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 an end seam. What I'm gonna do is take my interfacing. This is some really, like, I bought this bolt not realizing how, like, thin and terrible it is. So this interfacing, like, it's not good. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut strips off of this and I have, my heat press is warming up currently and it is so dusty. Oh my, I use this. I just don't clean off the top of it. Yikes. Yeah. I'm going to cut strips of the interfacing to put on the edges here, just all of the edges, because my hope, I don't, I can't interface the entire fabric because as you saw with these other ones that I made, I'm leaving the back open. So if I interface the whole thing, you're going to be able to see that interfacing. And after a while, the interfacing comes off. It doesn't make it nearly, you can't wash it then with the interfacing on all of that because then it's just going to come off and it's going to look bad. So my hope is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to interface the edges so the interfacing will stop the fabric from stretching where I'm going to be sewing it. And once I'm done sewing it, I'll take and I'll peel off the interfacing and like rip it or cut it so it's really like right up against the seam that I made. I'll show you as I'm doing this so it makes more sense, but I'm gonna give that a try because if that works, not only is that going to make all of my seams look nicer, it's gonna be significantly easier to sew it together. And it is like a extra, not that necessary step, but if I can make this look really good, this will also be a good way for me to use up smaller interface scraps that I always end up having when I interface larger uh, fabrics. I always end up with like thin scraps that I just throw away because I don't have any other use for them now I would have a use for them. So I'm gonna try that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, I got ahead of myself a little bit and forgot to film the steps, but I went ahead and I heat pressed all of the strips to just the edges you can see on all of these. I didn't, there's not one on this edge because I didn't need to sew anything on that edge. And then in the back as well of this one, strips all the way along. This this is pretty in, stuck on there, so I'm gonna try, instead of like forcing to peel this off, I'm gonna try just flipping the pillow right side out and seeing how it looks without worrying about it. Like I'm still gonna go ahead, I'll cut off these little overhang bits so that those aren't there. But other than that, I'm gonna just leave it and kind of see how it looks right side out. So right side out, it is a little bit bulky around the edges when it's still empty. Um, I mean, that's kind of just to be expected though because those are all seams and this is otherwise like laying flat. So like you can see the back seam right there and stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and find one of our pillows that will fit in this and stuff it and see how it looks stuffed. All right, I'm actually really happy with how that looks. It doesn't, I mean, the corners might feel just a little bit on the bulky edge, but it's not anything that would take away from the pillow. It's, I mean, it looks really lumpy because I'm using an old pillow in here, not like a brand new one, but I'm really happy with that actually. And then on the back, it looks nice and clean because I actually, you know, cut out enough fabric. I am quite happy with that. And it was only just a little bit extra work, but it made my sewing life so much easier which makes it worth it. I was able to sew this in like two seconds. And although it took longer than what it would have taken me to sew it to add the interfacing, I think that's going to help just make everything feel much nicer. So I am quite happy with that. And look, now it's a little flower pineapple pillow. That's real cute. I like that a lot, cool.